Here at Shea McAfee, the scotch is brought in by the case. And champagne is waiting as usual. Champagne is on ice. And excuse me for smoking people, but it's one of my vices. Cigarettes are always ablaze, and the guns are always loaded. At 1,300 feet per second, this is at 800 feet per second. So which one would hurt more? Oh, this, <laughs> absolutely. But I'm not here for a party or target practice. I'm here to talk to him about how his life took a very dark turn during his Central American interlude. Why did you go to Belize in the first place? Well, because I'm a stupid man. Easy to joke now in his pleasant suburban kitchen, but back in 2009, before everything went so horribly wrong, Belize seemed a brilliant idea for John McAfee, who was eager to escape the cascade of lawsuits back in the US. Most beautiful beach in the world, a reef a quarter of a mile offshore. I snorkel, I fish, I swim, I love the water. It was beautiful. The quintessential millionaire's dream. He purchased a spread on an island called Ambergris Key, surrounded by American expats. But McAfee's most intriguing fantasy wasn't on the beach at all. All right, get ready for some serious heart of darkness here. As seen on this CNBC report, he purchased a second property in the interior of the country and moved deep in the jungle to a place called Orange Walk, where he had set up a lab. And I thought, wow, this is, uh, this is a dream come true. Allison Adonisio was a Harvard-trained microbiologist he brought into the jungle. The famed entrepreneur was at it again with his latest startup venture, creating plant-based antibiotics. But she says the enterprise fell apart when her benefactor started to become unhinged. He became very paranoid. He was talking about taking over the country. And I started to think, this guy is a madman. McAfee says he was helping the locals, feeding poor families, and providing many with jobs. I employed half of the town. I can show you a letter from the mayor saying that Mr. McAfee's done more for orange walk than any of our citizens have. But exactly what was he doing for those citizens? McAfee admits he brought in young women to be in his harem. Then there was the gang of convicted criminals McAfee proudly says he hired as his armed bodyguards, his own private militia. Everybody I hired was an ex-felon and had spent half of their life in prison. It sounds like that's a recipe for disaster. They never shot anybody, they never even shot at anybody, never even pointed a gun at anybody because they were dangerous people. He called them hitmen. He told me repeatedly that he could have people hurt, taken out, if he wanted to. Adonisio says it all became too much for her. But listen to her traumatic account of what she says happened when she told McAfee she wanted out. When I did go over there, um, <laughs> the conversation did not go as I expected. And, oh God, I feel so stupid. She wasn't able to go on. I'm sorry, I just... The one time she was able to describe publicly what she says happened was in a documentary film about McAfee called Gringo. I told him I had a headache and, and he... He brought me, um, he, you know, he went into the other room and, and he brought me two pills and a glass of orange juice. It tasted foul. She says he drugged her with that juice and then raped her. I only have sort of flashes of recollection. He was standing over me naked. I grabbed my clothes. I don't even remember taking them off. Adonisio says she quickly fled Belize without telling the local police. She says U.S. authorities told her they had no jurisdiction, so no charges were pursued. I don't know what to tell you except that I have emotional and physical scars from that experience. Alison Adonicio, a mad woman. A mad woman. A mad woman. Well, she claims that you raped her, you right. drugged her and raped her. Well, she can claim whatever she likes. Never had sex with her, certainly never raped her. She seemed rational. She was not. I find it rather ironic that somebody as unhinged 
as McAfee would say that I'm unstable. I think that I'm pretty strong considering everything that I've had to go through. Then, in April of 2012, McAfee was about to have trouble with the law for an entirely different reason. There was a belief that he was manufacturing illicit drugs on the compound, like as I said, because of all the different criminal elements that were there. It's very unusual that you'd be doing research into plants and you need so many people to protect you. Microphone ready! Belize's gang suppression unit raided his lab. They say on suspicion he was making meth. No drugs were found. <laughs> McAfee claims the government was harassing him because he wouldn't pay bribes. I was on the verge of something when I refused to pay an extortion for $2 million, and a week later, the gang suppression unit destroyed my lab. McAfee abandoned the jungle and moved back to Ambergris Key, but trouble followed. Among his neighbors was this man, Greg Fall, a builder who came from Central Florida to Central America. This is the house in Belize. It took him about seven years, seven years to build it. Greg's mother, Eileen Keeney, says her son wanted a peaceful retirement in the Caribbean, but when she came to visit him a few months later, she says it was anything but peaceful. Greg was not happy with him and he had had some issues with McAfee. Keeney says her son Greg was disgusted by what McAfee had brought back from the jungle, that harem of women, the armed guards, and especially the swarm of dogs that constantly menaced passers-by. He said, now, we're going to be walking past McAfee's house and there's going to be dogs there. Now, they're usually fenced up, but he says, I just want to warn you. As Keeney headed home to Florida, she had no clue what was ahead. Two days later, she received an unfathomable phone call from her daughter. And then she told me, Greg's been murdered. And I left out this blood-curdling scream. A brutal beachside murder. Was the eccentric millionaire involved? 